Should be up? Yep, we're good. Okay, excellent. Good to know. Hi, uh, my name is Maud. Um, I'm the host for the Black Metal Artist Promotion Agency YouTube channel. And today we're having Bonestorm. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so Bonestorm was formed in 2019. And uh, what initially inspired the creation of the band and all of your artist, artistic goals evolved since then? Well, uh, the inception with, of the band, um, as you've noticed, I'm the only one here because unfortunately everyone else had different stuff come up and uh, we didn't want to reschedule. But uh, the inception of the band, we were all friends in high school and we just have known each other, been in each other's lives for a long time, but we're involved in different projects. And then the stars just sort of aligned in 2019 for us to all finally be able to start um, making music together and performing together. So that's uh, been how we came together. And then as far as our um, evolution musically, um, we are all very much self-educators. And so we look to try and find new influences, ways to like better our playing styles, uh, just things to generally expand what we're doing so that every time we put something out new, that it's a little bit more evolved than the last time we put something out, which is something you might notice if you listen to our first DP versus our second DP. Absolutely. Uh, we can feel that there is a better, um, what could I say? Um, cohesion between mm -hmm. uh, you guys and uh, the music seems to be more fluid. Indeed. Mm -hmm. um, so your EP released in 2023 features only two tracks. Oh, did you decide on Pay For Your Sin and The River Wizard as the defin defining pieces for this release? So uh, for that release, we ended up going with those songs because those are the songs that have a really positive reaction live. And I would also say Pay For Your Sins is my favorite song to perform live and well, really just in general. I'm really proud of that song because it encompasses a lot of what the Bone Storm sound is. I believe. And so we led with those ones. They were newer songs, which is why I think you can tell that we weren't necessarily as cohesive on those ones. Mm -hmm. And so with this latest release, there is that higher level of cohesion, perhaps because we've um, had those two other songs a little bit longer, but we just really liked Pay For Your Sins and River Wizard. So we pushed those ones first. And um, speaking of which, today I saw that you published on your Instagram page like an article and uh, it said that um, Bonestorm was, was a mix between um, Dark Throne and Sepultura. Do you mm -hmm. think that's accurate? Um, not necessarily, <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> Um, I am heavily influenced by Dark Throne, so I do think that they got that part right. Uh, Sepultura, I do enjoy quite a bit. Um, I wouldn't say my guitar style is all that similar to theirs, though. Uh, I probably borrow more heavily from bands like Megadeth or Slayer, if we're in the thrash vein of things. So. Uh that's what I thought. That's why I asked the question. I, to, to me, you sounded, well, you not sound like them, but if I had to pick an inspiration for you, uh, that would, would have been Slayer, mm -hmm. opinion. Maybe Megadeth, when you, if you say so. Um, so both songs of the EP have a unique blend of storytelling. Can you share the meaning behind the river result and how you crafted its narrative? Yeah, so the river wizard is an interesting one in that it was a reverse order song. And what I mean by that is usually what happens is as the guitarist, I'll write the majority of the music and then the rest of the band will fill in around me and 
things like lyrics, for instance, are usually something that come in last. Uh, however, uh, with some of the songs, I wrote the lyrics and then my vocalist tweaked them. Uh, River Wizard in particular, what happened was he told me he had this idea and told me lyrically about what he wanted to do, what he wanted the story to be. And it's like, I need something that like sounds uh, slow, calm, and creepy. And so that's how I came up with that uh, melody that is the primary one for River Wizard. Okay. Um, <clears throat> how does your environment in Salt Lake City influence your music, both lyrically and atmospherically? Does the natural landscape or cultural atmosphere of Utah affect your sound? Uh, I would say maybe yes and no, because uh, if you listen to, well, I know that you listen to a lot of different black metal. Uh, so for us, I think there's a distinct sound between like American black metal and black metal across other countries. And so we definitely have that edge to it uh, particularly too because we're kind of like black thrash and so it's uh, that slayer blend that you picked up on as well and i would say that that's kind of an american touch to do things that way to where we have that heavy thrash element it's not unique to americans but i would say that that's um, definitely a factor there as far as the culture and the environment is concerned uh, I don't think it affects us lyrically too much um, because a lot of the time the lyrics are done about things that we just kind of have a uh, interest in. Like the latest single, Waliki and Warfare, is about Dracula's army. So, you know, not a lot of uh, that necessarily in Utah, but you get it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, as an independent band, what have been some of the challenges and rewards of releasing your music without label support? Or do you navigate promotion and distribution? Yeah, so it definitely has been a learning curve and a bit of a challenge because as we are independent, um, it often feels like a second job for me in particular because uh, I have to go out, find the resources, talk to the venues, um, see the interest as far as the promotion goes, um, such as with the Black Metal Artists account and uh, scheduling interviews and doing everything I can to get the word out manually, more or less. And so I think a lot of that would probably be easier if we had some backing from a larger company, but yeah, we do the best with what we got, so. Yeah, that's a real job. I mean, mm -hmm. I do that as well. And oh my gosh, it's it's so different than creation. So, and being an artist, mm -hmm. yeah, it's quite difficult. So, yeah. And uh, so, yes, black metal is often associated with themes of rebellion, darkness, and introspection. What personal or physical philosophical concepts do you explore uh, through Bon Storm's music? Uh, I would say a lot of the music is influenced by my thoughts and my feelings as I write particular parts and um, particularly when it comes to philosophy it's something that I delve rather deeply into. Um, I read a lot of um, Nietzsche. I also like uh, studying early psychologists such as Carl Jung. And uh, part of my work actually is informed by that as well. I uh, work as a substance abuse counselor. And so I get to tie in a lot of my philosophy, a lot of my psychology knowledge when I'm helping out clients and I'll hear like some pretty rough stories and oh. um, Part of the way that I process a lot of that is by coming home to write music. And so, uh, you know, if uh, there was a particularly depressing day, then it's really good to just start that artistic process by playing something and seeing what I come up with. That's excellent. And that's very rich. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, could you tell us about your songwriting process? 
how do the ideas of your songs evolve from the initial concept to the final recording? Yeah, so the songwriting process for us is generally, I will uh, start the process kind of as I was just describing, where yeah. I'll just start playing, I'll see what comes out, and then when I get something that catches my attention where I'm like, oh, you know, that sounds pretty good. I'll try and chain off of that a couple of other riffs until I have like the skeleton of a song, uh, more to speak. Or mm -hmm. yeah, you know. And so then um, I'll go into our band practice and show it to the rest of the band. And then my drummer will usually suggest like, uh, why don't we cut this part down or why don't we um, make this part extend or maybe you could play it in a three instead of a four or a four and a three, you know, basically just kind of gives me ideas on how to um, maximize the riff. And then once we've done a fair amount of that and shaped it, that's usually when uh, the vocals will come in and I'll help our vocalist write um, the lyrics. I'll come up with like, usually something that I have in mind for, but he's done his own stuff for some of the other songs too. And then he takes it, he makes it his own, takes out what he doesn't need, keeps what he likes. And then uh, we go from there. And then usually there's a couple uh, other areas of refinement is we're playing it to where we'll notice things and then fine tune it. But after that, usually that's how we get a finished song. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. And um, what role does live performance play in your vision of Bone Storm? Uh, how do you translate the raw intensity of your recordings to a live audience? So I think we're one of those bands where our live performance is actually better than our recordings because it can be pretty challenging, I think, to capture a lot of what's going on um, in a recording versus what's live. And so part of that, too, is that we just haven't um, had a ton of experience with the studio, you know, because we've only released these two EPs. And so it's a learning curve as far as learning the mix, the master, the things that we want to do differently to improve it. And I think we did succeed with improving it from EP1 to EP2. Um, however, our live performance, that's pretty much where it's at. So anyone who watches this, I highly recommend if you're ever down in Utah, uh, check us out because we play probably about twice a month and we are planning on doing a couple of West Coast tours um, this coming summer. So we'll be around um, in that capacity. But yeah, our live performance, it's the intensity is there. The fans are behind us. We put on a good show, particularly our vocalist. You know, he knows how to really get people engaged and going. And so it's a good time. Oh, that's excellent. I mean, you're pretty busy, like twice a month. That's that's a lot. And oh, yeah. When do you when will you start the tour on the West Coast? Uh, so the plan is going to be probably spring of 2025 is when we would like to do that. And because this is going to be a newer endeavor for us with this band, a lot of it's just going to be like small burst weekend tours, you know, to where it's like maybe we'll drive up to Colorado, do a couple of cities there, then uh, come back, wait a month, go to Texas, you know, wait a month, go back to California, you know, just kind of exploring that way and till we get like it really dialed in, make those connections with those other venues, those other bands, and then hopefully 2026, we could do like a long tour to where we're on the road for like a month or two. Oh my gosh, yes, you'll be on the road for quite a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's very exciting. Oh yeah. That's excellent. And um, when you'll know the dates and uh, locations, please uh, keep me posted and uh, we'll talk about it. Yeah, I would love that. Um, Many black metal bands draw inspiration from history, mythology, or personal experiences. Where do you mm -hmm. find you, well, lyrical inspiration? You told me about um, all the stories you hear and uh, all about the um, mental illness and stuff. 
but how do you balance storytelling with emotion in your music? Yeah, so the way that I like to go about things, particularly if I'm the one who's primarily um, doing the lyrics, is to have a dual meaning thing. Um, the actual music itself are the emotions that I'm feeling at the given time that I try to have come through in my guitar playing. So um, I'll give you a couple of examples. So the song Pay For Your Sins, uh, the guitar parts, I wrote those when I was going through a uh, particularly uh, painful breakup where um, the person I was with, I had found out was actually cheating on me. And so, you know, not a great feeling, but it translated to some very beautiful music to where now it's my favorite song to play. And lyrically, it went in another direction to where, you know, it's like my vocalist is a really big Star Wars fan. And so he told me it's uh, like a blend between like Satanism and Sith Lords lyrically as far as that goes. So that one's kind of an interesting one in that it just combined a lot of our interests together. Um, the song Dominion, which is uh, on the brand new EP, that was actually the first song that I wrote for Bone Storm, interestingly enough. And that song has a dual meaning because it, on the surface, the lyrics are about demonic possession, but um, the song is actually about my recovery and that uh, how I was feeling when uh, I was an alcoholic. So. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So, with Bone Storm being, uh, being relatively, uh, sorry, uh, being relatively new to the scene, or do you see the band progressing over the next few years? Are there any new sounds or directions you're excited to explore? Yeah, definitely. So we are a relatively young band in the sense that, um, you know, we've been around since 2019, but then of course the pandemic happened. So venues weren't really booking shows until like 2021. And uh, I think we first started playing live in 2022 because that's when a lot of the restrictions in Utah were um, lowered a significant amount to where we would start to get booked regularly. I counted it out the other day and we just barely hit our 20th show two months ago when we opened for Anvil. And so with that, and uh, now we've had a lot of growth in a small amount of time relatively, you know, in 20 shows, uh, we've put out two EPs, we've opened for Anvil, Aborted, uh, Panzerfaust, uh, Profanatica, uh, some pretty like decently sized um, bands as far as their followings are concerned and Oxygen Destroyer too we just played that one that's a real fun show okay. um, so the, in terms of the growth that I see for the band um, we're already working on new music right now and I'm hoping that we can get back in the studio before the end of the year and start recording those songs and we have another release that we're hoping to drop in December that was recorded around the same time as um, the other two tracks that we just released. But you kind of know how it goes now with uh, Spotify is that in order to keep a crowd's interest and, and stay relevant, it's harder to release like a full album. It's easier to keep people's attention if you're just releasing a couple of songs at a time so december we'll have another release that's very exciting excellent mm -hmm. and do, do you have um an album in mind um as far as the album goes uh we definitely have enough material to where we could record a full length and part of me even wants to really use these next few EP sessions to dial in our studio stuff, really figure out what it is we need and what we want from the studio so that we could go back with some of these uh, earlier releases, re-record them, make them better, make them tighter, and then release them on an album where it's like half of it would probably be what people have already heard, but better. The other half would be brand new stuff. So. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, would you like to say something to your fans? Uh, thank you very much. Um, you know, it's 
really difficult, as we mentioned earlier, being a self-promoter and just counting on word of mouth. But uh, particularly with black metal artists, I'm very grateful because I know that we had quite a few eyes uh, when they helped us support the CP release. And then, of course, with you doing this interview with us, it's going to help out more getting some eyes on us. So anyone who cares about this band, I am just very grateful to you. And thank you. And I hope we, uh, we'll help. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure uh, we will. And uh, if we ever come to, to Canada, especially on the East Coast or uh, especially my town, Montreal, I'll be so glad to, to meet you guys and uh, see you live because it looks like an experience. Very. Oh yeah, I would love to come up there. Uh, we played with... Um... I'm going to totally butcher how they say their name because it is one of uh, those uh, French names. It's uh, Almas, I think. It's like A-U-L-N-E-S. Um, mm -hmm. They came through for Salt Lake. It's our second show. Those guys were really cool. cool. Uh, I think they're uh, from uh, Quebec. But uh, yeah, you know, we have an in there. So maybe if uh, they feel like hosting us, we could uh, come down your way. Oh, that would be excellent. That would be really excellent. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, OK, I think um, uh, we are at the end of, you, of your interview. And um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for uh, all your answers. And um, I really hope you get all the um, credit you deserve for on your next tour and hopefully i'll see you soon yeah definitely you'll hear from us and again i'm really grateful to you thanks for taking the time to uh check us out and yeah uh to everyone else if you haven't already uh bone storm ep2 featuring Wallachian warfare dominion follow us on bone storm slc at instagram thank you so much have a nice day. Thanks. You too. Thank you.